Hi everybody, today we are looking at the Beam 3 Pro, not to be confused with the Plus, which is a battery-powered uh, DAC amp. This one is a dongle. And if I'm saying that right, uh, Odd Direct. Uh, this is actually my first product from them. I've seen the Beam 2s before. I actually, I think I borrowed it for a short period of time, but I didn't have it enough to make a, a, an opinion. Sometimes I get things, somebody said, Can you, you want to use this for two days, three days or something, and I want to use it because I want to try things to compare. If I don't have it for a week, uh, there's not going to be a review because I didn't have it long enough. Honestly, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to get something and then give you a review like a day later. Hey, this is better than so-and-so. No, it's not an informed review. I'm just trying to push something out and I'm not going to do that. So that said, I've had this for some time now and it's simple enough. I mean, especially if you log the hours in, it's a simple enough product to just give you a short review. It works great. Okay, there's your review. I could be finished right now. All right, let's look at some of the accessories because I'm not going to do that. Uh, this one is like gunmetal. These things are fingerprint magnets. So this is your lightning to see adapter for the Apple people. I do use a couple of Apple products. Um, iPad mini and two iPods. Actually, one of them is an old iPhone. Uh, very old iPhone. Uh, this is an, a C to A adapter. And you also get this C to A, uh, C to A, C to C cable, which is useful. Uh, I have a dozen uh, DACs and amps that never came with the C to C cable. I needed one for a long time. So I got a, an aftermarket one right here that I use all the time now. Um, that's my go to C to C. Uh, but it's nice that it came with one. So, like I said, it's going to see port. There are like little bevels right there, little bumps to help protect the cable from getting knocked around. They also have that for the uh, the audio jack on the bottom. Uh, as you can see, construction is solid. This thing is obviously light because it's tiny, but it feels really well in the hand. It's got some a little bit of weight to it. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the weight in just a little bit, but it's not really. This thing's so small, it, it really don't expect it to be too heavy. Uh, you got a light there. You also got a light right there. If you can see the little dot reflection, you got the logo. And I think there's like a protector over this right now, but I am not, I, I usually keep the protectors on They're The only, um, like the stickers on some of the amps over there that I had, I had to pull them off because they looked horrible because they had a big tab. But if it's got just a regular flat sticker i'm going to keep that on because that protects the the screen from scratches and everything so why not i'd rather have the plastic get scratched than the product itself so there's just the one button for the three gains and metal with a kind of a soft powder coat not really rubberized but very soft in the hand on each side maybe a kind of rubberized but not to the point where it's like velvety soft but still it's soft and uh so you get those accessories in the box. You get the manual with the warranty information as well. Uh, it should be noted that this thing has some very nice specs. And we're going to get into that in just a second as soon as I pull them up. Um, so you have a... Um, that's not actually the specs. It's got some really good uh, internals inside there. Let me just bring that up to the screen that I'm looking at right now. You can see the uh, two amps and the way it's wired. Very, very good quality tech that went into this. Uh, this is designed, by the way. It should be noted that this is designed. Let's let's start with the warning first, because this thing has some power. Uh, it is designed to drive up to 600 ohm. Now, a lot of stuff says that, but this can actually do it. And I'm not saying it's going to be air shattering at 600 ohms, but if you have something that's like 150 or 250, like some uh, uh, DT770s, which I don't have anymore, unfortunately, they're gone. So I couldn't test them with this. Um, yeah, the, the, this will do it, definitely. Uh, your low gain on this, okay, starts at... 
227 M V R M S. Remember, there's an M in front of that first one. Uh, then you get into the medium gain, and that is 1.65 V R M S. And then your high gain, 2.88 V R M S. Max power, low gain is 115 milliwatts at 16. R, it says, I assume that's ohms, uh, 150 milliwatts at 32 R and 13 milliwatts at 600 R. So, you know, don't expect these to do miracles. I mean, this is just a dongle and it's running off the power of your phone and everything. Uh, the SNR is minus 118 decibels and the THD plus N is this is the ground noise, the amount of distortion is 0.0003%. Very good. It has a sampling rate of 32 bit at 768 kilohertz. Uh, it should be noted that the uh, frequency response of this is 20 to 40 kilohertz. Um, this also has DSD support up to 512. This has MQA rendering. The weight is 32 grams, so 32 grams, I mean uh, 23 grams, excuse me, it's even lighter than that. So 23 grams, a little bit of weight compared to some dongles, but for a dongle itself, this thing is light. I mean, you could just keep this in your pocket. It ain't going to weigh your pocket down by any means or way. Um, so trying to get into the other specs. Uh, where is it? It has dual. OP amps. So there's dual chips in here. Uh, it has different stage where the stage where one would work and then the other one would work uh, to mimic that big stereo. And this kind of does have that big stereo sound. Uh, you have a ES9281 uh, AC DAC chip. And like I said, it's got MQA rendering. It's got PCM up to 700 and 68 at 32 bit and DSD up to 512. We'll get that out of the way. That's that's basically all the specs you need to know about this little guy. Uh, it does a decent job with the uh, power drain from the phone. There isn't like a major drain where your phone's gonna go to, down to nothing. Now that said, there is a warning up here, which I'm trying to find. Yes, it's made for 600 ohms, so they say. Um, Okay, so see that warning right there? That is a warning, and I'm going to read that to you myself as we just, you know, do a quick look around this. Uh, if this thing wants to stop going crazy. The lights are flashing because I am, I'm having a windstorm, so it's kind of throwing off the uh, focus. The Beam 3 Pro thrust is too large. Low gain situation after the volume is increased to 40% will be overpushed. The phenomenon is noise or no sound. Okay, the use of 16 ohm and below impedance headphones and earphones, there is a risk of overpush with these. Overpush means basically it's going to damage the headphones or earphones. It's going to blow them out, it'll blow the drivers. Uh, so don't use this. This this is not for if you're just strictly doing IAMs, there are probably a bunch of dongle DACs out there that sound really good that'll do the job. But if you want to go from you know higher performance IMs to full size headphones and you just want this tiny thing to carry with you, uh this is the guy that's gonna do it. Uh, that said this one has the 3.5 millimeter. There is an, a new model. I don't think it's out yet, but it will be out shortly. Uh, an S model, the Beam 3 Pro S. And that one will have a 4.4 millimeter, which probably means it will have a little bit more power, uh, a little bit more push to it. I'm not sure this really needs that, to be quite honest, but I do have a bunch of 4.4 uh, millimeter device so I'm probably going to end up getting that one as well because I really like my hi fi men I have the flow cable on them right now which ends in 4.4 so that would be more convenient because now I have to switch you know to the old cable with the 3.5 I don't have any 
uh, 4.4 to 3.5 adapters that I know of. I have like full size to that. I'm, I'm not going to be running a whole bunch of adapters, that's for sure. Nobody wants to do that. That's very inconvenient. Uh, but 3.5 is very common for a lot of headphones and stuff. So I can see why they started with that. And of course, there's a balanced model. So that would be my only thing about this is it's got the 3.5. Uh, I tend to like the 4.4 myself. That seems to be the one that I use the most is 4.4 with portables and uh, my IAM collection and stuff. Although I do have a ton of 3.5 millimeter uh, stuff and cables, but you know, for the most part, I like the 4.4 myself. Uh, this one does a really decent job. Now, we, of course, we should be getting into the sound. What is the sound like? Now, this one has. We'll start with the bass. It has a very good bass. It's very linear. Uh, the very uh, good presentation, maybe a little bump there, making it a little bit more balanced. But for, for the most part, like mids and highs and everything seem to be like neutral with this. Uh, it has a really nice neutral feeling. Now there's very good layering and imaging with this as well. Uh, it definitely does good with the mids. Uh, the mids are, you know, not really kind of forward, just kind of like in a natural place. They definitely don't have any recession there. They're just clear and quite detailed. Uh, the DAC itself is, is just crisp and, and detailed uh, and very open and eerie sounding. Uh, good soundstage presentation as well. Uh, overall, just a really good performer. I'm kind of losing my voice, so I apologize for that. Um, this weather's just been horrible, really. It has been one day is like 40 degrees, the next day is like 12. It just, it's horrible for people. Uh, so I hope everybody's being safe out there. So that said, what do I, basically I'm going to say this is neutral, crisp, uh, with some very good amount of details and openness to it. Uh, very big sounding, kind of big stereo sound to it, uh, with some really good, nice neutralities. Um... Your mids present well, your highs present nice and crisp, your bass has some good depth to it and good power, and just overall, it's a good performer. It sounds fantastic for something this size. I mean, I have this I've had for a long time, the little Bluetooth, and you put it next to there, they're both the same size. And I always thought this was the smallest piece of audio kit I was going to have, and I was wrong. And while that Bluetooth does a decent job for IMs or, and stuff like that, it ain't going to drive my planners. I mean, I, it can probably drive them, but on a very low, whereas this thing can just power through them. Um, what was it that was on these? The uh, 58Xs, uh, very good on this as well. I'm trying to think of what I borrowed for the testing. My DTs are back. My, the Jubilees are back. Um... What else? Uh, basically, the the um, the Anandas, the HE four Xs, the uh, HE four hundred SE. No, I don't have the SE. I have the four hundred I. Um, and just a variety of different things. My AKGs, seven twelves, and the uh, M two twenty Pros. The M220 Pros are about 60 ohm, the Fostex, uh, T50RP, and the Fostex, uh, the Coney Blues. Now, the T50RPs are Mayflower modded, and the Coney Blues are actually modded. They were modded with the Argon mod. Um, so, but, but it drives those really well, and they, of course, when I got it, I didn't get the balanced for some reason. Um, yeah, that was wrong. But anyway, enough of my mistakes. Uh, what do you have that, that could drive these, uh, you know, give these a test run? What kind of headphones were you thinking of putting with these? Cause this thing will do it. Uh, it'll definitely do it. It's got some really good sound to it. There's some really good details there to it. Uh, very harsh tracks. And I'm not talking MB3s because we always start with MB3s and then we work all the way, all the way up. I mostly have FLAC and Apple lossless files, uh, but I do have some DSD and I do have some MQA files just to test if it, if it renders them well. And, uh, we're getting into the 15 minute. I, I, I try to do these reviews to you as simple as possible. Um, 
So this guy was uh, was very good. I just kept talking about him. I really like this, honestly. And I'm not a big dongle person. But this one definitely surprised me with the power and the sound. I mean, if it was powerful and it sounded horrible, I'm obviously not going to be impressed. And if it sounded well and couldn't get out of its own way, then obviously I wouldn't be impressed as well. And this thing impressed me on both levels. It has power. There's clarity. Uh, and together, it, it's just a nice travel device. I mean, this thing can fit in the smallest of bags and you're good to go. You got your amp, you got your DAC. And that as long as you have enough phone power, you're all set. And obviously it comes with all the adapters, so it doesn't matter. Android, PC, uh, you're taking your laptop with you, you're taking your phone with you, you're taking your uh, iPad or your MacBook, doesn't matter. This thing can handle it all. And that's what really just impressed me the most about the Beam 3 Pro. Uh, hopefully there'll be a review on the Beam 3 S because... I like this so much that I would actually buy that other one just because it has a balanced DAC. Uh, I just like it. So I, anyway, I hope you feel safe. I hope that you're, you, you know, you, you are all keeping safe, all your family and your friends and everything. And I will see you somewhere out on the internet. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.